Okay, so I decided to just go hang out, take a shower, and I came back 640, almost 641 million damage turn limit reached, 1500 turns, and you already know it's full true auto, literally put it down, walked away, because it's only 35 minutes, and that's usually an indicator that, yeah, um, this was a full auto team, I didn't stop and click, I mean, I guess the argument could be made like I clicked and I targeted things, but no, I, I didn't do that. And if you don't believe me, uh, wait till next week. If you want, specifically for you, I'll do a full entire video and we'll let that whole 35 minutes run and we'll see if we get another 640 mil. I'm pretty happy with this. This is pretty nice because it's full auto and I didn't, you know, th these stats aren't the best that they're possibly that they possibly could be i mean these guys don't have blessings trenda doesn't have a blessing nia's don't have blessings one of them doesn't have masteries gerptuck is barely even built just he's put out in speed the only ones i would argue that are pretty well built are these three and this one's not even maxed out completely so yeah pretty solid team again thanks to tavish for teaching me walking me through this and um helping me put this team together really appreciate that look at that Curse set Lydia, 100 mil herself. Awesome work, awesome work. All right, here we are with Tavish. He's about to explain to me how to build a, what did you call it, a budget W Mecco Hydra Trenda Abuser team? So the team that this comp is based off is the W Mecco Shusen Trunda team. Obviously, like three of those champs are missing for that comp. Yeah. So basically to supplement the W Mecco, we're instead running double Nia. And instead of running a shoe send, we're putting Arbiter in to Terminator boost the entire team. Mm -hmm. And essentially, we're going to be going low drag or correction, going high drag with Trunda. And then we're just going to crank the rest of the team with Arbiter. And then we're just going to basically double everyone's speed turn. Basically, everyone's going to be going two to one to Trunda. That's the whole point of this team. Okay. Um, obviously, everyone but Gerptuck because Gerptuck is slow. That's the whole point of this. Um, yeah, basically the team, the way that it's going to run, uh, as you can see in front of you with the current presets and everything, this turn order stays consistent the entire time. Mm -hmm. It's fully synced from, I think it's like turn one or something. It's it's middle of turn one is when it, or not turn one, middle of turn two is when it full syncs. Okay. Like once uh, it comes Arbiter's turn, they're on uh, total turn 12. I believe that's when it, this one full sinks. And um, basically, this is just like a straight rip of the uh, white whale comps, which are literally just go fast and go like 100 to 1 turns to the boss, uh, which are normally used in regular Demon Lord. But I don't think anyone use a white whale team today. Yeah. How easy it is to do damage in clan boss. I don't think anyone runs that still. Yeah, it's basically what we're supplementing here. Okay. This is going to work for all rotations, or I mean, I see other rotations here too. Is um yes and no. It will work on all rotations, but it will not work as consistent. So um on one of the rotations, I forget which it is, there are three heads that are force affinity. So basically Trunda is hitting she's hitting negative on three heads, which is literally half of the hydras. Uh yeah. your runs are gonna be all over the place. You could have a like PR run. Or you could get like two million. It's either or is possible. <laughs> yeah. um, on the rotation where you get the triple force, uh, I'm gonna keep it real. Don't use this team. I'll just, this shit's rough. I'll figure um, it out. And I'll just put like a bunch of other. I'll just you know what whatever happens happens for that rotation. Yeah. But for the most part, I'd be hitting. I don't know upwards of 500 mil. Did you say this team that I used? Um, and this was on like my original, this is on my free to play account, like the original, my original free to play. I ran this team on, and instead of running a Yumeko in the mix, mm -hmm. I realize now that I messed up turns. And this is the I didn't even make you the one with the Yumeko team. This was my team because I didn't have a Yumeko yeah. and I was hitting two and a half billion with this. Oh, wow. I realize now that as I'm talking about this, this is not even the Yumeko comp. This is the this is the one I started out with a Kaimar mm -hmm. and dropped the Kaimar because it was my only reset champ. And I dropped the Kaimar for uh, Gerptuck and that ended up giving me one and a half billion for damage. I mean, as long as I can break 
over consistently 500 into 600 somewhere between six to a billion i think i'll be happy so those are my parameters for what success would be rebuilding my normal hydra team and then it all comes down to um your trunda so like the trunda that i ran fair i ran a 9600 attack trunda oh, no. specifically 9618 and then i ran a 344 crit damage Holy granted God. that was with no merciless set that was savage gruel and that was not fully oiled either uh the only piece that was oiled and like actually made use of the oil and not just like flat stats was the um the boots and the uh the gloves the amulet wasn't even correct so like there was so much more on the top end that that could have done it was doing some solid numbers yeah um, this is definitely going to be a um this this is basically going to be like a gamble team. When it works, it's going to work very well. When it doesn't work, it's going to be like a ten minute run. I think these are the speeds on the right, right? Yeah. Okay. So on there, you see like um, like say for example, Trunda at two hundred, Arbiter at three fifty. There, those are like the exact speeds. Um, I'd have to double check on the speed gaps, but you can literally see like, say for example, you get Trunda at like two o two. You just bump Trunda's speed up two o two, and if anything changes in that turn order you just adjust the other speeds accordingly until that turn order goes back to the same that's basically all it is okay so ideal situation we would have it exactly like this but if not then there's no way in hell that's happening just... <laughs> those are all like even yeah. stats and there's they're not in speed ranges um yeah basically you just want to keep that turn order the same okay. that's basically all you're worried about um which is why if you've ever heard me talk about the trunda teams before, I never really talk about the speed tune. I always refer to it as the turn order. I normally like having a whole bunch of buffer room when I make these tunes. So it's normally like a 20 speed gap difference where it's like, oh, I could put Trunda at say 220 or 200 because mm -hmm. that just makes it easier to build for it. I see. Um, I'll be honest, I don't remember the gaps when I made this. But the most important thing is just the turn order. So we have Arbiter going first, yeah. then we have both Nias going second, and then it looks like Lydia, then Gerpy, and then Trenda dragging uh, at the very end. Yes. So as long as this turn order is as is, then we're, we're solid. Yeah, there are a couple times where, um, like if you scroll down a little bit, um, I forget where it is, like which turn, I want to say it's like maybe... Yeah, yeah, right here, where you see on turn four, how you see um, basically everyone goes twice, but Trunda only goes once. That's exactly what we want. I see. So the, so the whole thing is you want everyone going at like a two to one speed to Trunda. And the easiest way to do that in this case is you have Trunda so far down, like speed wise, that she's dragging the turners. That's where the term comes from. So she is literally used as like an anchor. Like think about it, like a boat anchor yeah. to keep the boat from like drifting away. You drop the anchor so it stays in one place. Trunda is being used as the anchor to keep the turn or the turn meter of the team in sync. So you keep that consistent profile of the turn order. So basically, Trunda should be closing out every single boss turn. Realistically, it's not going to happen in a proper run because three percents are going to happen. Buffs are going to get stolen. It, it, it's Hydra. These runs last for like an hour. Yeah. And there's there's like a thousand different instances where a 3% happens and you get fucked over. And these are true speeds, right? So if, if anybody's got live arena bonuses, the true speed would need to reflect these, you know, around here, right? Yes. Okay. So I guess what we'll do right now is uh, rebuild these champions. And I'll keep in mind the true speeds. As I'm going in for the build, I'll adjust accordingly for that. All right, cool. And if you, like, say, for example, like, some champs are way too fast or way too slow, they can always be adjusted. So, for example, say your Arbiter is, like, 50 speed too fast. Well, let's say she's at 400, and that's, like, your Arena Arb. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why you'd be running a speed arb in this meta at 400 speed but let's let's just say you are yeah um basically the way that you'd fix that is depending on how fast arbor's going i do not remember the exact i'm 
like I'm running around ratio of it. Fifty-six right now. Yeah, but just like say for the sake of the example, like your average is at four hundred. Um, everyone else would stay the same, and your trunda is like coming up. I think it's twenty-six speed, twenty-seven speed, something like that. Basically, you just keep playing around with the calculator until like the tour current order goes back the same. What you just have to be careful of is um, we're using Trunda to drag the turn meter. If you put Trunda too fast, uh, you keep the same order. But the problem is you're going to be losing so much speed. Like the, it, the ideal scenario is like how the Corpola Cadaver teams were, where it was uh, like 30 speed from your fastest champ to your slowest champ. So like from the Yumekos to the, your correction, from the Lanicus to the Corpolan Cadaver, there was like a 20 or 30 speed difference. That was the peak rotation because you had the same order, like the same eight in the turn order every single time. And there was zero variation on less mischief soul turn meter. If the turn meters of the Hydra heads got buffed, like say from the head buffing the turn meter, that literally meant nothing. As long as Mischief did not steal your turn meter at any point in the fight, it was a guaranteed like 40 billion key. And it was just, it was so busted. All we're really looking for is that Trenda is going, like one of the main things we're looking for is that Trenda is going last in each of these turns that we see here. And then specifically for the fourth yes. one, we want to make sure everybody's going at a two to one ratio to Trenda, right? I mean, if you if you start messing with the speeds, um, where that big turn is, where like the eight will turns happen, that may change like turn three or turn five. That doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. It's just you want, you're basically looking specifically for Trunda to be at the last of every boss turn. That's, that's your key there. Okay. Um, if you're fortunate enough to run, to be running like a fast Trunda or like a Shu Sen team, then Trunda should be going twice for every boss turn order. But that needs insane gear and or a Shu Sen. Yeah. So we're ignoring that. All right. Let's go ahead and build this. So. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys first my Nias, and then I'll start showing you guys the other uh, teams, the other champions that I have. This is Nia number one. She is plus one. Her books fully booked. These are the pieces of gear that I have on her. Keep in mind, a lot of this isn't min-maxed yet. I kind of just threw gear on her to make the speeds and everything work, but there is still room to oil. There's still room to enhance or enchant the gear, and so on and so forth. These are the total stats for my first Nia. We're looking at high defense, 290 speed, just like suggested in Tavish's uh, calculator. And then when it comes to masteries, we're taking War Master. The second Nia is going to be, well, we'll show the total stats here, a little bit um, less on the defense and HP, same, um, same speed. That's all that really matters there. These are the pieces of gear. No, no sets in particular. If I could, I would build her in a cursed set just to keep the curse up all the time. This one I would have loved to put in a provoke set just to help out with provoking the first head. Or not the first head, but the head that cleanses. The head of uh, cleansing. Fully booked as well. Masteries. Oh, wait, hold on. Fully booked as well. And then masteries here, there are no masteries, so there's going to be a little bit of damage that's going to be left on the table. But once I eventually get the masteries for her, I do believe that we're going to be doing uh, a lot more. And we're not going to take that, we're going to take War Master here. Now we're going to go and take a look at Trunda. Trunda is not in her best form yet. She is in a Merc set. Well, part Merc, or she's in a Lethal and Merc set. So lethal here, ignoring 25% of uh, damage, getting some extra attack and crit damage here. Pieces of gear, obviously trying to make sure she's pumping out as much damage as she can. Again, not min-max, still room to improve here. Oils, enchantments, fully booked. Masteries, as always, do not blindly copy masteries, but go ahead with any of these. Blindly copy those masteries, taking Helm Smasher there. And if you're wondering why Helm Smasher over... Something like War Master. War Master has a cap to the total amount of damage that you can do. Helm Smasher does not. These are the total stats. Trying to get as much attack as I can. 176 speed, 100% crit rate, 300 crit damage. We're going to see if she can one-shot the, the heads. And uh, yeah. 
Now we're going to take a look at Lydia Arbiter. Or Lydia's right there. Lydia's in a cursed set, so she can help keep the curse, the hex up on the uh, enemies as, as much as possible. These are the specific pieces of gear. Speed, accuracy. I also use this Lydia for spider. Same one, accuracy on the chest. And she's got some protection going on as well. So cursed and protection, getting these bonuses here. Total stats, 277 speed. And I was focusing mostly on HP and defense as well as some accuracy. You only need about like, for, for low end, for normal, you only need like 200-ish accuracy. You don't need a lot. I think you need even less resistance or maybe even more, I forget. The higher you go, the more likely you're going to want to get closer to around 400 plus. But I'm only using her in in normal. But yeah, fully blessed or fully booked. Brimstone. Masteries include going all the way to War Master, taking Sniper, lasting gifts because she does place the strengthen and speed. Going to take a look at Arbiter. Speed set, obviously, she's trying to be the fastest one on my team. So uh, if you're looking at specific pieces of gear, really just looking for speed. Total stats, really only cared about her going fast at 356. And that's pretty much all that matters to me. I pretty much built my team around Arbiter because she was already going at a specific speed. And I didn't want to mess with that. And Intimidating Presence. Uh, pres I almost said President. Here we go, taking Timely Intervention. And then we're going to look at Gurp Tuck. Gurp Tuck does not need any masteries. Does not need to be fully booked. It can help, but you don't need to. And for Blessings, I, I don't know what I would take for Blessings. Probably Brimstone. And he's not fully geared out. We just needed him to get to a specific speed, which was 266. And that's all that we needed from Gurp Tuck. Pretty much. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take us into the run here. And I'm going to leave it mostly on full auto. But I do want to see how the run, well, runs. And to see what we can get from a full auto team here. In fact, I'm not even going to touch anything. We're just going to let this run. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so this is one of the qualifiers that messes up the run here. So if Trenda tries to do her move and she ends up hitting... Because she doesn't have like the best... Um, AI. So I guess, like Tavish uh, mentioned, either in, in the first part of the video that you saw or later on, he was talking about how ideally you would want this to be a manual run where I would sit here for two or three hours and do this to try to get the best score. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let it run on auto. I'm going to do what everybody else does. Let it run on auto, walk away, come back to it later. If it gets a score that I like, cool. If it doesn't, then, you know, move on. And or click replay and redo it. But this is the setup here. Uh, actually, hold up. We don't want that to happen. So I need. I, oh, I forgot to show you guys the 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 presets. Actually, she should probably do this first too. Oh wait, no, it's speed tune. We need her to do this first to stagger the cooldown. So I'm not gonna mess with that. That was my bad. All right, these are the presets. Trenda, open or prioritize a two. Priority 2 on the A3. So that's right here. These are her true speeds. Oh, that, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. The true speeds are going to be different than the builds that you saw. So, um, let's make sure everything's saved here. I forgot to mention that, and this is a huge thing. I should have mentioned it earlier, but I have live arena bonuses. And so, uh, for Hydra, the speeds are going to have a plus 20 to them. So I built my Trunda. I built everybody with 20% or 20 points less speed than what's true here in Hydra. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're hitting normal. And again, the true speeds are right here. Okay. These are the presets for Trenda, presets for Arbiter. Check the true speeds here. Priorities for Lydia, A2. 297 true speed. Gurp Tuck, close out the A2. A3, priority 1, 286, true speed. Neo 1 and 2. Neo 1, we're going to open with the A1. Then we're going to 
prioritize the A2, 310 speed, true speed, and we're going to stagger the A2 from this one so that the uh, second one can hit the A1 or hit the A2, priority one on the A2, 310 speed. With that being said, now let's go into the run and get the setup right. So we do that, open with the A1, got the decrease speed on that one. Then we get the decrease defense and weaken. We do get the hex on this head here, okay? Now, the purpose of GURP Tuck is to place poisons on all of the team here, but the main one is Trunda. Because with Gurptuck's passive, we can boost Trunda's damage. Because one of the issues I was having prior to putting Gurptuck in here was that Trunda was not one-shotting the heads. She wasn't doing enough damage. I don't know if she can one-shot here, but because of Gurptuck, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to do a lot more damage. That's the main purpose behind Gurptuck here. Because the poisons that he places increases the amount of damage that we do. So... When it comes to choosing the heads here, I don't know the difference between choosing um, the head with the green or the head with the yellow. So, um, I, and you guys can teach me this, whatnot, but I've heard and I've seen before that when the headless head is yellow or like the same affinity, the splash damage is going to be a lot more. But I don't know if the initial target being uh, this head head here, the head of mischief being green, if he's going to uh, spread more damage that way. I think we're going to focus on this head here, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And um, yeah, we'll see the, the spread. Let's slow it down here. So 4,700, we did not one shot. We did not one shot. We did not one shot here. Let's go ahead and redo that and just do some more testing. Set this up. Decrease defense and the weaken. And let's go ahead and hit... Oh, we didn't get the hex. We want to make sure we're getting hex all around, too. That's one of the other multiplier... Or one of the other parameters. There was, there was not enough hex going on around here. Because hex is going to spread out the damage, so we're doing a lot more damage. That way we're, like, we're multiplying our damage significantly. Let's check this one. Okay, so we do destroy this head with the splash damage. Now let's go ahead and just focus on this head here. Actually, let's just run run it. Let's just see what happens. So we're not looking too good. I wonder if this is the rotation that we should not be using this team on. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this run and I'll get back to you guys at the end. Hey, what's up? Just checking in with you about a minute later. The heads are all down, and it seems like we've got a good amount of debuffs all around. I just wanted to see if Trenda's going to do her uh, A2 here to see what kind of damage we're going to see. And we're seeing 9 million. I saw 17 million, 13 million on one of the heads there. So yeah, it's looking pretty solid so far. I think it just takes a little bit in the beginning to get the ball rolling there. But once it gets rolling, I think it's get, it's going to get rolling. So um, I'll check out, check back in with you guys in a bit. So one of the things that I've started to notice is that the Nias actually will sometimes not target Trunda. And that becomes an issue when we need Trunda to use her A2 all the time. And that's why Tavish was saying that this probably will be a rather difficult uh, full auto team. Like the potential is going to not be maximized like i won't be able to optimize the amount of damage that i'm gonna uh, put out with trunda uh, especially when you see right now she just got eaten but had i been manualing then trunda would have been able to just focus her a2s completely destroying heads because that's the whole idea behind this comp you want to make sure that the heads don't get a chance to take a turn because they're freaking dead now with trunda being eaten I don't know how long it's going to take for them to get her out of there. But yeah, without without the, the heads targeting Trunda, it becomes uh, a little bit of a shot in the dark, I would say. But so far, it's looking pretty good. You guys know me. I don't want to sit here for two, three hours trying to do a, a Hydra run every single week. 
I'd rather just let my keys run and then whatever happens, happens. And, you know, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I decided to just go hang out, take a shower. And I came back 640, almost 641 million damage turn limit reached. 1500 turns. And you already know it's full true auto. Literally put it down, walked away because it's only 35 minutes. And that's usually an indicator that, yeah, um, this was a full auto team. I didn't stop and click. I mean, I guess the argument could be made like I clicked and I targeted things, but no, I, I didn't do that. And if you don't believe me, uh, wait till next week. If you want, specifically for you, I'll do a full entire video and we'll let that whole 35 minutes run and we'll see if we get another 640 mil. I'm pretty happy with this. This is pretty nice because it's full auto and I didn't, you know, th these stats aren't the best that they're possibly, that they possibly could be. I mean, these guys don't have blessings. Trunda doesn't have a blessing. Nia's don't have blessings. One of them doesn't have masteries. Gerptuck is barely even built. Just he's put out in speed. The only ones I would argue that are pretty well built are these three. And this one's not even maxed out completely. So yeah, pretty solid team. Again, thanks to Tavish for teaching me, walking me through this and um, helping me put this team together. Really appreciate that. Look at that. Curse set Lydia, 100 mil herself. Awesome work, awesome work.